You got to feel good about that, right? Amen. Bless the Lord. I feel like I fell in a well. Somebody get lassie. Timmy's in the well. <laughs> feel good? Yes. Oh, man, I, f- I feel better than you. <laughs> it's a great day, man. I'm excited about all this, all kind of really good things that are happening. Let me share a couple of things. For those of you that aren't aware, and we look a little shallow in the first service today, usually the first service is a little more full, but a lot of folks are coming to second service because actually the guy that's preaching in the second service is probably one of my favorite speakers. I absolutely love this guy. Larry Randolph will be preaching at the 1115. Um, he's probably the second best preacher today preaching. Never mind. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But, but, but he is really, really good. I, I absolutely love Larry. Uh, probably, absolutely, one. Of, I'd have to tell you that he may be the most prophetic man that I know. Just incredibly prophetic. Um, just watched him again through the Pursuit Conference, and he just, he just points and says, in the second row back, there's a carol. Carol stand, and, and, and there's a carol, and she stands, and that just freaks me out anyway, and then just starts telling her her life story, and I just watch this stuff over and over, and you realize when somebody hears God that clearly, that's God's way of telling them, God, God knows you, he loves you, he cares about you, you know what I mean, and then speaks into their life in a very positive manner. Uh, don't, like, like, sometimes when you're around the prophetic people, you can be a little nervous, like, because they might know stuff about you. Uh, pro- prophecy is always with comfort and edification, okay? <laughs> so uh, I-, I just feel really excited about Larry being with us. Uh, Matt's on his way up to pick him up now, and he'll be here for the 11:15. So that's going to be a really, really great time. I'm excited about that. Uh, there's just been, I, I got to tell you some testimonies are coming in, like really amazing testimony, stuff that makes me cry. Uh, next two weeks, we're going to really spend some time just celebrating the testimony. Today we begin a new series on financial freedom, and for four weeks in the month of February, we'll talk about financial freedom, and, and, and I love this topic because uh, I've had people that have said, you know, I trust in the Lord. Our trust isn't determined so much by what we say as it is by what we do. Amen. Um, actually had a situation, uh, an elderly couple um, that were... Uh, pretty financially well off. They were, they were set for, for a long, long time in their life. He'd had a really good position. And he purposed with his voice, he always said, I trust God for everything. Trust God for my financial needs. Trust God, trust God, trust God. And uh, he got sick. And as he was getting ready to die, he told his wife, he said, I'm going to ask you to do something. And she said, what is it you want me to do? He said, I want you to go in the attic and string a clothesline. She said, why in the world would I do that? He said, I want you to go to the bank, get my money out, and hang my money on that clothesline in the attic. And she said, why in the world would you want me to do that? He said, because when I die, on my way up, I'm going to take all that money with me. (laughs) So she did, hung all that money in the attic, and he died. Two weeks after he died, she finally got the courage to go upstairs, and guess what? All that money was still there. And she looked at it and said, I knew I should have hung it in the basement. <laughs> That's not a true story either. Okay. <laughs> but but here's, here's where we're at, man. <laughs> I want to preach to you that God is my source and my supply. How many believe he's really your source and your supply? I feel good. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach for, during the month of February on financial freedom. Also during the month of February and the Wednesday nights, Jody Tyler is going to be sharing uh, in, the con- in, in, in this class 
I'll be with, I'll be here in the class. I'm not doing a separate class, but Jody's going to be sharing on financial freedom as well. And she's got some amazing stuff. She's actually going to share a little bit this morning because I want you to see what the gifting that we have. We have a lot of gifting in our house and sometimes we don't get to showcase our gifting very often. So I want to do a lot more of that. Actually, over the next several weeks, we're going to do several different things. It'll be kind of fun with that. But I feel this stuff is really, really important that we catch a hold of it. So go with me to second Peter chapter one. I want to show you a couple of things. I'm going to preach to you. I'm going to preach like a wild man for an hour, and then I'm going to get to listen the next, next time. All right. But I'm going to show you some things that I think are really exciting. Okay? Everybody good? Amen. Second Peter chapter 1. I started off. Okay? Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I love the phrase, like precious faith. We've obtained faith. Do you realize that to every man's given a measure of faith? It's up to you what you do with it. But come on, when you got born again, can I say this? When you got born again, you got the same faith I got. Right? It's just what are we going to do with it? Right? So we've obtained like precious faith. How did it come? Through the righteousness of God in Christ. Right? Now watch. Okay? Now I want you to see this. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Did you catch that? Come on. Grace and peace are multiplied. There's a place where I want you to know when we understand our righteousness and we grab a hold of grace, peace is just a byproduct. Come on. I was saved by grace through faith, not by works, lest I would boast. Come on. But there's something about you and I understanding that we've we've obtained this precious faith. We got grace and with it comes peace. When you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you lay your head on the pillow tonight and if you don't wake up tomorrow, it's okay. You're going to wake up in glory. There's a peace that comes with that that the world can't take away. The old songwriter said, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. It comes through the knowledge of him. That's what it just said. That's a good word right there. Now watch what he goes on to say. According as his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. That is an amazing verse right there. Like if that verse don't jump your tractor, you just got a dead battery. There's does not hope. He just said he gave us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Do you know what all things there actually means? It means all things. <laughs> it literally means everything you need. He's given us, and can I say this? He's given you everything you need to live and walk in complete victory. Come on. You will never have an opportunity to say, well, I wasn't equipped enough for that. He gave us all things. All things that pertain to life and godliness he's given. How did he give it to us? Through the knowledge of him. I love this phrase through the knowledge of him because the word there, that word knowledge is actually a Greek word. It's epinosis. And literally what it talks about is an experiential knowledge. We've experienced him. And out of experiencing him, out of encountering him, he gives me everything I need to live and walk in victory. All, he gave me all things through knowing him. I, I, I love this idea of the all things because to me, let me share this with you. Whoever saw the movie Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory? How'd them guys get into the Chocolate Factory? They got a golden ticket. Come on. They got a golden ticket. When they got a golden ticket, you know what it did? It gave them entrance into Willy Wonka's kingdom. How many know when Jesus died on the cross, you got your golden ticket? Oh, yeah. You got a golden ticket, bid you entrance into his kingdom, and you have everything you need to live and walk in victory. Now, you all have access into the kingdom of the Lord, to, to his kingdom. But let me challenge you there's 20 of you in the building right now that in your bulletin you have a golden ticket. If you have a golden ticket, get up here really quick. I got something to give you for free. It's a good thing. Come on. Look in your bulletin, quick. Open up your bulletin. Bottom right-hand corner should be a big golden ticket on 20 of them. If you got a golden ticket, come up here quick. Should be 20. Oh, you're going to get blessed. (laughs) It's a good, you look scared. You're getting money. (laughs) Come on, it's not something to be afraid of. This is a good day. Come on, you got your golden ticket? Because you can't get in without it. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, we, we, they want chocolate. <laughs> oh, one, two, three, four, five. 
I think there's about 13. There should be seven more. Anybody else got a golden ticket? We planned on 20. Check your bulletins. Let, look on bulletin playing around you. Maybe someone's left their bulletin left. Yeah, grab somebody. If somebody's not getting up, grab their bulletin and say, I'm taking that in Jesus' name. <laughs> the Lord gives and your neighbor taketh away. No, never mind. Okay. <laughs> It's okay. Cool. It's okay. That's just more for the second service. That's right. They're, they're coming. Cliff's coming. I think you're close to 20 now. Come on. It feels good. So here's the deal. You got a golden ticket. And this is what I learned about golden tickets. Golden tickets meant something in the Willy Wonka movie. In this one, your golden ticket actually gives you access to be a blessing. I want you to understand that God is the source of every blessing. How many of you know that James writes and says, every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights? Well, if you have to understand that Jesus said, you're the light of the world, and he's the Father of lights. That was really good. <laughs> every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variable, neither shadow of turning. So here's the deal. He doesn't change. That's what that literally means. Your golden ticket gives you access to something that Pastor Lori's going to hand you. Inside this envelope, don't open it, but inside of it is a $50 bill. Every one of you is getting a $50 bill. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray about what to do with this $50 bill. It's not necessarily for you. If you have an absolute need, then maybe it is for you. And maybe God was saying, I want to bless you. But I'm going to ask you to really pray and ask the Lord, what do I do with this $50 bill? <laughs> I, think, I think this. I am, so, I am so encouraged by what I'm going to call spirit-led giving. It may just be that today you go to the restaurant. And when you go to the restaurant today, there's somebody at the restaurant and the Lord lays it on your heart. Maybe it's the waitress. Maybe it's a little old couple next to you. And you could take your envelope, right? And you could just walk over to that individual, right? And, and, and you could do this. Like you've got the envelope in your hand and you look at somebody and you just simply tell them this. And this is a big word to me. But listen, the Lord laid you on my heart to hand you this envelope and let you know, don't be afraid. He knows your need, and God is the source of your need. There's a place where you come to understand that oftentimes you weren't meant to be the supply. God was just going to use you to supply somebody else's need. Do you understand what I'm saying? Come on. And, and it's not for my own personal storage. It's for me to give it away. And sometimes what we have to just do with that is be able to take our envelope. Maybe it's the waitress. And you know, do you know how many single mom waitresses are out there? Just trying and they're working their feet off and carrying tables and their backs are sore and they've got carpal tunnel in their wrists from carrying trays for so long. But you know what? They keep going and going. Why? Because they have an incredible need. They've got children that they would love and they want to support and take care of. And out of that place, if you could just bless them and say, God sees you and he knows your need and he told me to give this to you. I just want to bless you with this and let you know Jesus absolutely loves you. Do you know how much of a difference that can make in somebody's life? So today what I'm going to do is I'm empowering you. You have, your, you have your envelope in your hand. If you have a special need in your life, you may be able to keep that just for you because you know there was a special need. But it might just be that you're going to be the source of blessing in somebody else's life. So you pray. Ask Holy Spirit to bless you. Ask Holy Spirit to flow through you. Ask Holy Spirit to open up the avenues in your life to be a blessing to somebody around you. You feel good about that? Amen. Bless you. Go, go ahead and be seated. Just be praying into it. It might be on your way back. God just highlights somebody and you just hand them the envelope. Right? But I just believe that. So you let them know, man. It's your golden ticket day. Don't tell the second service. Okay. <laughs> They'll all be going through the, through the bulletins. I want the golden ticket one. <laughs> I feel good. I just feel like there's something special about that. How many of you realize God's always the source? Yes. Come on, every blessing. Can I tell you something? I don't care if it's your truck, your house, your car, your dog, your whatever. I'm telling you, God's the source of every blessing in your life. Maybe not your cat, but the rest of the things in your life. Listen, just kidding. Okay, but here's where we're at. In the blessing of the Lord, good things come. Jody, come and share with us. Dave, you want to hand her that mic? I, here's what I believe. I just believe that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on around you, if we can keep our eyes, and we were singing that earlier as Kenny and Jason were leading us out in worship, it's about keeping your focus. It's about keeping your eyes upon him. It's 
about knowing he's the source of every blessing. This is Jody, and Jody's going to be teaching to us on Wednesdays, but I'm just going to let her share right now. Go for it. Good morning. morning. Has to be green. Okay. There you go. All right. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I'm going to share a testimony, um, but I will preface this that you're going to get the Reader's Digest condensed version. Um, But I want to encourage you to come out on Wednesday nights because we're going to do a much more in-depth teaching and I'm going to be able to share with you about the covenant of blessing, um, spiritual, the spiritual side of giving, seed time and harvest, parable of the sower. But then we're also going to deal with the practical side of finances, getting out of debt, um, investments, how to um, get more streams of revenue going in your life. So we're going to cover a lot of different things. And I'll be able to share a lot of different, I mean, God has been amazing in my husband and I's life through finances and through trusting him. And um, he is the source of our supply. And that's the number one thing that you need to remember. And just to give you a little bit of background on us, uh, my husband and I, we have five children. And raising a family that large takes finances. And when we decided years, I mean, way back, (laughs) to have these kids, We knew that we didn't want to raise them up in poverty. That was not our goal. We knew that God could supply. How many times do you hear people say, well, they're only going to have one child because that's all they can afford because children are too expensive? But you knew what? I wasn't going to buy that lie because children are a blessing of the Lord. And I, um, so we decided to have a large family and that God would provide for that family. That doesn't mean that we haven't had struggles. And um, many of you would know, how many of you in here are self-employed? Okay, anybody that's out there that's self-employed knows that that alone is a walk of faith. You have to rely on God as your source if you are self-employed. There, you have no choice. If you don't, you're not going to be employed very long <laughs> because if you start to rely on your own strength, it just doesn't work. And um, so Tom and I started Kingdom Landscaping in 1995, and, and that was in the midst of having all of our children in the 90s. And everything was going really good. We were doing great through the whole boom of the early 2000s. And all of a sudden, in 2008, when the economy dropped, everybody remember that? In October when the, of 2008, when the stock market dropped? Well, our business um, got hit immediately because we're in construction. And at that point in time, our, um, our gross sales in our business was probably around 400 thousand, which, you know, we're just a small family-owned business. It's mainly just primarily me and my husband and our kids. And when all that went down and happened, our income, our sales in our company went from 400,000 down to 125,000. And let me tell you, the debt didn't change. So when that happened, we found ourselves, we were $350,000 in debt. And, um, We went from 2008 to 2013 with an income, a family income, of about $30,000 a year raising five children. I don't know about you, but that's, if if you can do that, that's supernatural. (laughs) That's why I'm standing up here, because it is supernatural. And I can remember times during that period where we went 12 weeks at a time without one phone call with no jobs, no work, no money coming in, because that was, the, that was our life. We were both employed by the same company. And so we had to learn to trust God for everything. And one thing I will tell you is we never stopped tithing, and we never stopped giving. We weren't always able to give a whole lot in offerings, but when we could, we did. And there was a time in particular, it would have been 2008, 2009, I'm not sure, but I was in a service up at World Harvest Church with Rod Parsley, and they were doing like a debt cancellation type service. And I wrote down our $350,000 debt, and we gave a $35 offering, seed offering. Now, that was a whole lot of money. It could have been $35,000. That's how much that $35 felt to us to give, because we didn't have it. But we gave it. Now, did we miraculously all of a sudden go out and plant a tree in our backyard and pick all the leaves and they turned into money? No, (laughs) it didn't happen like that. But we consistently spoke the word of God over our situation. And we consistently just kept walking that walk of faith. And God would show up every single time we needed something. In In that time period, we received four pre-foreclosure notices on our home. 
We received repossession notices on all of our vehicles, even my Corvette. <laughs> and um, that meant we had two trucks, business trucks, they got repossession notices. We had a Honda, we had the vet, everything. And every single time when it came down to we were, were ready for the thief, you know, the thief was trying to steal, kill, and destroy. He was coming to take it. Every single time, God came through. And one time in particular I want to share is um, we were bidding this job. Because, you see, God uses people. And we were bidding on a job, and we really needed the job. And it was like we started working with this customer in, like, July. And he just kept changing the design and kept changing his mind. He was just, he had an architect friend, and they just kept changing things. So July went on to August, and August went to September, and September went to October. And this was about a $50,000 job. And we were at this point, besides being $350,000 in debt, we were about $50,000 behind in bills. And the stress of that, I mean, just think, I know some of you have been there, the stress of the phone calls every day not just sometimes, every day, the phone calls, the letters, the threats, the stress on your family, on a marriage, it was unbelievable. And, you know, and I wasn't even thinking about sharing this, but yes, there were times where both my husband and I had issues of the enemy coming and putting suicidal thoughts in our mind. Why don't you just drive off the road and hit that tree and just end it? It was terrible. But we kept holding on to God as our source. So we're meeting with this customer. We met with him all this time. Now it's getting to be almost November. So we're looking at, this is end of season. And we, he lives up this long lane. He actually lives in D.C. And his home up here is just a summer home. Well, not really a summer home, part-time home. He comes back and forth. And we leave the meeting. And once again, he did not sign on. And he did not give us a deposit. And we really, really needed it. And we're going down his lane, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to my husband. You know how people, you hear the term of being behind, you're in between a rock and a hard place? And that's how we felt. We were in between the rock and the hard place. But the Holy Spirit said to my husband, no, the rock is in between you and the hard place. And Jesus is our intercessor. And so we clung on to that word. And you know what? The very next day, I got an email from this gentleman, and he said, hey, I know I didn't sign on yet, and I know we haven't finalized things, but I left a deposit check up, in, up at my place, and he told us where he hid it, you know, just as good faith. And I was like, Phew, thank you, Jesus. But that's how he provided every single time that we really got to a point where we just were about to lose everything, and he always, always, always came through. Here's what I want to share with you today. It's been all those years, hardly any money coming through, and sometimes things don't always make sense. But today, that $350,000 debt is less than 20. Our house has been paid for, paid in full, and boy, is that ever financial freedom. Every vehicle has been paid that was under that load, and it's just God is so good, and He is our source. You can trust Him. You can trust him. And so um, I'm really looking forward to this building your foundation, your financial foundation class on Wednesday nights. Please come out because we have a lot that we can share with you guys, but also that you'll have an, an opportunity to learn a practical side and just hear some of the things that we did to, get, to go through that and to get out of it because it works. And here, the last thing, out in the Welcome Center, you'll see a handout called Wanted, Your Faith-Filled Testimonies. Right now, we are composing a 30-day financial freedom devotional. Um, we're hoping for a publication in March. We want your testimonies. Every single day, there'll be a, um, you know, a devotion with a scripture confession. But then on the opposite page, we want to feature your testimonies because testimonies help build up our faith. Because it's not just, you know, you can read it and hear about a testimony or read it on Facebook. But when you start hearing the testimonies of the people that you go to church with every single week, it will build your faith. And you'll understand, he's no respecter of persons. What he did for me and Tom, he can do for you. And he wants to do it for you. So please, grab one of these. And all the details are on it as far as what we'd like you to do. And, um, and give us your testimonies. Thank you. Amen.
That's pretty cool stuff, isn't it? Because you never know how God's going to work things out. Go to 1 Kings chapter 17. Let me talk to you about how God works things out. Because sometimes God just has incredibly fun ways of doing things. Let's just take a look. I'm going to walk you through some stuff that I believe the Lord has spoken to my heart about. Look at the first 16 verses. We're just going to tear it apart a little bit as we go. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there will not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. You know what he just said? He just told the king, who happened to be his enemy, the one that he was fighting against, and he told him, he said, it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. That's what he just said. That's a pretty strong word. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide yourself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it'll be that you shall drink of the brook, and I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and he dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Everybody see that? I think that's an amazing couple of verses right here, because first of all, here's what happens. God says, I want you to go down to the brook. I want you to abide there. You can drink from the brook. And by the way, I'm going to command ravens to bring you food. I don't know if you understand that a raven is a scavenger that takes away and never brings. Come on, man. Ravens are the birds that would come and they would actually take and steal your stuff, not bring you stuff. So I find that it's an interesting phrase, and I'm going to talk to you about this. Sometimes God wants to bless you by an unlikely source. I don't know how it's worked for you in the past, but oftentimes for me, when I found myself in a tough place, I gave God a great plan. (laughs) Come on, you have too. (laughs) Lord, if you just do this and this, everything's going to be cool. And if you do this and this and I do this, then you can do that. And this is really going to work. And I'm telling you, this is the honest truth. I have given God so many amazing plans and he hasn't used any of them. And I'm about frustrated with all that right now. I'm just going to tell you. (laughs) I don't think I'm going to give him too many more if he doesn't use one pretty soon. Because honestly, what I find is that God finds an an unlikely way to bless you. God, God finds, and it's over and over and over, you know, because you can stop and think, well, you know, there's a financial need in your life. Well, you know, I know this guy, he's got pretty, he's pretty well off financially. And you just assume that that's the guy God's going to use. And how many know he uses a complete stranger, somebody you might not even ever thought of, or somebody that you thought didn't have anything came up and blessed you. I think it's amazing sometimes the way God just moves in our life. He used ravens to bless Elijah. Ravens aren't givers, they're stealers. Never mind. (laughs) Now watch. In the midst, some of you will get that like Tuesday. (laughs) But follow me, follow me, watch. Because here's where you're at. And if you can see this, watch what happens. He goes down to the brook, and what happens? The ravens bring him bread and flesh in the morning. They bring him bread and flesh in the evening. It, it's working. He, he, come on. He did what God asked him to do, and guess what? When he did what God asked him to do, it worked. Hey, there's a plan. <laughs> Read the next verse. It came to pass after a while the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Have you ever felt in your life like you're doing everything you know to do? You're doing everything God told you to do, and your brook dried up. Come on. Lord, I'm doing exactly what you asked me to do. I'm doing exactly what what I felt like you wanted me to do. Lord, this is what I heard in my heart to do. I'm doing it. Why is the brook dry? Come on. And sometimes in our life, because I've done it. I've been there, man. I've been through different difficult places. You feel like you're doing everything right. You feel like you're doing everything you're supposed to do. You feel like you're really walking this thing out to the best of your knowledge and ability. Your heart's pure. Your conscience is clear. You're doing everything within your power to be pleasing vessel to the Lord. And all of a sudden, the fountain of your blessing just seems to have dried up. That's challenging. That's incredibly challenging. You're looking inward. God, what did I do? You're repenting of stuff you didn't even do wrong. (laughs) You're just trying to figure out, how do I get the fountain to start again? Come on. Because in those moments, we don't have a clue, but watch. God already is in tomorrow, and he already sees what's going on tomorrow, and you're still trying to figure out what you did wrong yesterday. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, and get to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I've commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. All right, here's where the part gets challenging, and many of you probably aren't going to be aware of this, but I want you to see something that's really huge. He just told him to go to the city of Zarephath in the country of Zidon. Okay, you need to understand that. What you might not realize is this. 
He just said, get up and go to Zarephath. It's the capital city of Zidon. The king of the Zidonians lives in Zarephath. What's interesting is the king of the Zidonians is Jezebel's dad. Jezebel is the one person on the planet that's out to kill him. Jezebel's the one person who has vowed, I'm going to take your life from you, man. I hate. She just literally hated him. And now what God just said is in the midst of this famine that, by the way, you caused, and now the brook's dried up because he spoke those words. It's not that he caused it, but, but God's doing this. He says, I want you to go, watch, right in the middle of the capital city of your enemy's father. Why? Because I've commanded a widow woman to sustain you there. Now, what I want to talk to you about is something that's huge. I think I think it's interesting that he didn't say, go to a palace and I got a king who's going to take care of you. He didn't say, go to the, to the governor and the governor's going to take care. No, he said, go, there's a widow woman there. Why? Because God still uses unlikely sources. And right in the middle of it, he tells him, go to Zarephath. I'm thinking, no way, boss. That's the last place I want to go. Probably most of us were like, I rebuke you, Satan. I know that's not the voice of the Lord. Come on, because, because why? Because we would think God would never lead us into the enemy's territory. But how many of you know David said, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Doesn't matter what's surrounding you. There's still blessing and favor coming your way. If you listen and hearken to the voice of the Lord. You want to be free? Do what God's asking you to do. That's a big deal. I've had times in my life where I had to listen to the voice of the Lord. We're in the service, and it's kind of what Jody was saying earlier. You're in the service, and the Lord's speaking to your heart. And just because we're talking about finances, let's talk about that for just a minute. But sometimes the Lord will say, you know, and do you guys do this? Do, you guys, do married people do this, all you married people? Like, you're, you're the guy, and you're thinking, Lord, what do you want me to give? And I get a number. And then I look at Lori and I say, what are you thinking? How many know what she's thinking is always two and a half times what I'm thinking? <laughs> like I'm thinking 50, she's thinking 150. <laughs> the, What I find is that even in difficult times, the Lord will lay something into your heart, and it's an incredible challenge. But out of a place of obedience, the blessing comes. And it's all, I got to say this, obedience always commands the blessing. And I found this. So here's what happens. Elijah is by the brook. The brook is now dried up. He, it's a challenging moment for him because why? Because when you're doing everything you need to do, the brook's not supposed to dry up. Am I right or not? That's the way we think. But watch, God has a transition coming. And here's where the transition's coming. God doesn't want just Elijah to be blessed, but as long as he's comfortable by the brook, he'll stay right by the brook. Why? Because sometimes God's got to remove us out of our place of comfortability to get us to another area. Why? So we can be a blessing in that area. But he'd have never went to Zarephath on his own. He'd have never even stepped into Zidon if, if he'd have had his choice. But watch, in a place of comfortability by the brook, the birds are bringing me food. I got plenty of water. I'm good to go. And God said, it's not just about you. Why? Because there was a widow woman that God wanted to be a blessing in. And he's going to move his man from the brook Charith right into Zarephath, the capital city of Zidon. He's not worried. Can I tell you, God was not intimidated by the king of evil. Oh, I could probably just preach right now. Sure. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and he said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I might drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. Now, what was going on in the country? Famine. What did he ask for? The most valuable commodity in the land right there was water. In the midst of a famine, a glass of water is a valuable commodity. Who hears me? Fetch me a little water. And she gets up to go fetch the water. And he said, and oh, by the way, would you make me a cake? <laughs> Preachers. <laughs> How many know God was working on both ends? Whew, this is huge to me. Now watch. So he says this. Watch what he says. Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I might drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel 
and a little oil in a cruise. Behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, and we can eat it and die. Who hears that? Now, the first thing I want you to understand is this. She didn't say the Lord, my God. She said the Lord, your God. She knew that Elijah was a prophet. She knew that Elijah was a man of God, but she wasn't even claiming God as her God. She's not an Israelite. She's a Zidonian. It's really huge that you get this, but out of that place, watch, God has a provision for her. God has a plan for her. God has something in store for her that she's not even aware of. Can I tell you something? She was in a tough place too. How many know it's a tough day when you're going hungry, but it's a tougher day when your kids are? Come on, what'd she say? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. I got a little oil, I got a little bit of meal, I'm gonna make a little cake. Me and my kid are gonna eat it, we'll build a little fire, we'll bake it, and it's our last deal, man, because we got no other source and no other resource. <laughs> Why? Because she didn't know, watch, she didn't have God like Elijah had God. <laughs> and she said, Your God, as your God lives. <laughs> but she doesn't know the God that Elijah knows, not yet, but he's about to reveal himself in an unlikely way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, I really feel this. Can I talk to somebody today? I got, uh, I got so many things I want to share. I got two people in this house. I'm not allowed to tell their story. They'll come over the next couple of weeks and tell their story. Incredible, amazing promotions that you'd have never saw coming. And I don't mean they got like a little raise. I'm talking about incredible promotions. I'm talking about canceled debts that are absolutely ridiculous that should have never been canceled. Why? Because God's moving in unlikely ways. I'm challenging us today, if you'll think with me, because there's some things that are happening right now that I believe with all my heart, God is on the move. There's some things that are happening right now that if you'll prepare your heart... And out of a place of obedience, I don't know how far this thing's going to roll, but I just believe with everything inside of me that, that there's, a, there's a fountain of blessing that is being opened up. And in the midst of the opening up of that fountain of blessing, incredibly good things are happening. So watch, watch what happens. I want you to see this. Elijah said to her, fear not, go and do as you have said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me after make for you and your son. Did everybody catch that? What's it talking about? First fruits. Remember how Pastor Lori was sharing about first fruits, and we've talked a little bit about first fruits? She said, first thing I want you to do is make me a little cake. Then after you make me a little cake, then you can make a little cake for you and your son. Now, how many know if you got a boy there that's about to get his last meal, and the prophet of God has just spoken, how challenging is that? She knows he's the prophet of God. She knows he's God's man of faith and power on the earth right now. Elijah's name is known throughout the earth at this point. I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but I'm telling you, the, the, the kings the, uh, all over, uh, come on, because he's foiled enemy plans left and right. The, the, the kings are gathering to, to go to war, and Elijah's telling the other king where they're all at. Every, every, they're, they're well aware of this man named Elijah. When she realizes it's Elijah, right, she realizes, man, uh, listen, he's just challenged me to do this. Your response is what matters. The challenge doesn't matter. The response does. She's got to make the response to bake the cake. She's got to, make the, she's got to take the response to do something with it. Now watch what happens. Fear not. Is that the first words? Catch what he says. Fear not. Just go and do, what we, go and do as you said. Make me a cake and then make your son's one, right? For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the bearer of meal will not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. I love that verse. Did you catch what he just said? He said, here's the deal. If you make this for me, if you do it the way that God says to do it, I'll make you a promise that the blessing of the Lord is going to come. And when the blessing of the Lord comes, you're going to be under the umbrella of God's blessing. Watch, it's not going to rain on the earth for a while, but before it rains on the earth and everybody gets rain, you're going to be under the umbrella of God's blessing. I don't know about you, but I believe that there's some things that are coming to America. I believe there's some things that are coming on the earth, but you know what? I'm not afraid of what's coming on the earth, and I'm not afraid of what's coming in the kingdoms of this world. Why? Because I'm standing in the kingdom of God, and I know my king knows how to take care of his kids. So I don't live in a place of fear or wonder or doubt or bewilderment. There's all kind of movements on the earth right now. I don't know if you saw this, but it seemed yesterday they be, the ISIS people beheaded another Japanese. Uh, they, 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 they took that guy's head. I was sitting in a diner and I saw it coming up on the TV. 
And I thought, man, there's so many of these little cells and so many things that are going on. And the turmoil that's in the world is ridiculous right now. But even in the midst of the ridiculous turmoil that's going on in the world, you know what? You can walk in a place of incredible peace. Oh, why? Because you understand who your father is. You understand that you're a child of the living God. You're a king's kid. Now watch what happens because I love this. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and her house did eat many days. The barrel of meal wasted not, and neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. I love this. I want you to see what was happening. She had a choice to respond, and out of her response, the blessing of the Lord came. I, I would ask you today this, because how challenging is it? I'm going to walk through the whole deal. Here's Elijah. How challenging is it for Elijah to get up and go to Zarephath? But he knows who his God is. He goes right in the middle of the, to, to the place of the king of Zidon. I've commanded a widow woman to make cakes for you, right, to take care of you and sustain you. He sees the widow woman. God points her out, and right in the midst of all that, he begins to speak to her. Elijah's done his part. Now the widow has to do her part. But how many know God's always going to do his part? Amen. He's faithful. He's faithful. I promise you, God's faithful. And I stop and I look at these things and it really makes me smile because in the midst of all this, what I found was this widow woman has to be able to look to her son and say, you know what, son? Here's the deal. We only got this. It looks like it's all we got, but God said... But God said, I, I want you to know that oftentimes in the midst of our challenge, we have a but somewhere. And oftentimes our but says, well, I want to do this, but I'm not sure. Or but I, it seems scary. I want you to know the only but that's right is but God. But God. Well, it doesn't look good, but God is faithful. There's something about you and I understanding that we serve a God who's more faithful than we'll ever imagine. In the midst of that, she begins to make a cake. She gives that cake to Elijah. Wait a minute, there's still a little meal. There's still a little oil. She makes another cake <laughs> and another cake and another cake. And she continued making cakes out of that until rain came on the earth and the famine was over. What are you saying, Pastor? How's that happen? The faithfulness of our God. But she'd have never had a multitude of cakes if she didn't make the first one. Out of a place of obedience... The faithfulness of God shows up. Now watch. Not only does the widow have a testimony, but what about her son? Come on. Can I talk to somebody? What about his wife when he grows up and their children? And they hear the testimony of how God sustained them in a time of famine because we fed the prophet. I don't know if this affects you like it does me. But I say this. The greatest legacy that I'll ever leave to my children and my grandchildren has nothing to do with my house, my car, my boat, or my finances, but has everything to do with the faithfulness of God. I've seen the faithfulness of God. I've experienced the faithfulness of God. I know the goodness of my God, and he's faithful. And out of that place, man, that's the legacy that she can live for her son and her children's children and her children's children's children. I think it's an amazing reality that God puts this right in the heart of a challenging situation and says, do you trust me or not? You know what Philippians 4 and 19 says? It says, but my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. I, I love this. Because the apostle Paul is talking to the people, they're his spiritual children. He planted this church in Philippi. And there, to these spiritual children, he is saying, listen, let me tell you about my God. He'll supply all your need. Oh, every need that you have, when you put your trust in him, he will supply. You might say, well, pastor, we've been through some hard times. We've been through some tough places. You're still here. <laughs> Come on. Come on. He's still faithful. My God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. I, I love the psalmist David who said, I was young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, and I've never seen his seed begging bread. What was he saying? He was saying God's faithful, and he knows how to take care of his kids. He's a faithful God. Yes. When you put your trust in him. Amen. Don't hang your money in the attic. Put your trust in God. God uses birds and brooks and widows 
to sustain this prophet? What would God use to keep you? I'm telling you, there's something about you and I understanding how faithful our Father is. God is so faithful. He's able to sustain you in the midst of every challenge. doesn't matter what that challenge is. Here's the part, deal. You just got to do your part. You just got to do your part. You just got to do your part. And I found that over and over, if I continue to do what God thumps my heart to do, he'll continue to do what he always does best. He knows how to take care of his kids. There's something about you and I asking ourselves this incredible question. Is he really my source or not? Is he really my source or not? Because I look at this all over the place, and there's several of you in here. I, I saw John and Gay Macrius back here, and they have Shalom Christian Missions. And you know what? It's a challenging thing to have a ministry in Kenya while you live in America. But they understand that God's faithful. So over and over, you're taking care of 100, 100 and some orphans and, and 400 and some students in a school. And God's doing amazing things there. But you know what? They have to rely on God for, to be the source of every blessing. You know why? Because they couldn't afford to do it, but they trust that God can afford to do it. And guess what? God's not broke. <laughs> it's a good day. Lori Kachal's right over here, and I saw it right over there. And you know what? She has a ministry where they're taking care of kids, uh, w- women that were in street, uh, the, 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 the sex trafficking ministry. Or, yeah, she's in the sex trafficking ministry, taking care of people that are, were caught up in some of those things. And in the midst of all that, guess what? There's incredible needs for finances. You know what? You could never do it on your own, but God is faithful and God laid it upon somebody's heart to say, hey, could you take care of these people? And guess what? So somebody stepped up to the plate. Kelly sits in the front row oftentimes and you know what? She takes care of the girls in Courage House and some of the things that go on with that and it would never be able to do it, never be able to do it on your own. But you know what? There's something about taking a step and saying, God, I'm going to trust you. God, you told me to do this. Now you'll supply the need. Uh, I love, I love when, when Pastor Lisa says it all the time. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. I don't know what all God wants to do in your life right now. Here's what I do know. He's faithful to supply. He would never ask you to do something that he wouldn't provide you to do for it if you'll just be faithful. Elijah looks at a widow woman whose son's about to eat his last meal. She is baking his last little piece of bread. Make me a cake first. Because God said, if you'll do that, he'll bless you. That's a challenging moment. Come on. That's a challenging moment. But in the midst of all that, she's got to determine, God, you're either big or you're not big. God, you're either big enough or you're not. Can I challenge us? God, you're either big enough or you're not. And there's something about you and I looking at our life and saying, God, I'm going to trust you. Do you know why? Because it's, for me, experience has been an incredible teacher. I'm going to talk to you real plain, and then we're going to pray. But I found that early on in my life, what I thought was this way, and I'll share this with you. I'm a strong boy. I've always been pretty strong for, uh, even for my age when I was young and and, and, and I can remember lifting things that people thought I could never lift. And so I felt like, well, the Lord gave me this strength. So the Lord gave me this strength so I could go out and work and make whatever money I needed to make and do whatever you need to do to keep the wolf away from the door. And oftentimes in my life, I'd work two or three jobs and then pastor the churches as well because they were small churches and you did whatever you had to do. And I often felt like, well, this, is, this was the answer to God. And I believe this, watch. I believe that there's a place where the, and the writer says that if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. I understand all that. But there was a place where what I found was that I was relying on my strength, not his. Who hears me? Come on, because it's easy to feel like, well, you know what? I can do this, I can do that, and I can do this, and I can do that. And sometimes you're working till midnight, and then you're back up before the sunrise, and you're out doing it again. And, you know, and then we say God's the fountain of blessing, but sometimes we realize that we were saying God's the fountain of blessing, but we were realizing, can I say this? We were relying on our own strength. And there come a point in my life where I had to realize God, I've been preaching for years, you're the source of my blessing. But have I been living like you're the source of my blessing? And I come to find out that my life's a whole lot better now because I realize that God, it's not about sit back and just let God do it all. I I believe I believe God will challenge us. We gotta get up and do things. How do you know that? Because he told Noah, build an ark. Why didn't he just say Ark B? 
Come on. Come on, that's a 120-year project, dude. <laughs> God, just arc B, and then there's this giant arc with a nice door, <laughs> remote control buttons. No, never mind. But he doesn't. Why? Because there's a place where we've got to rise to the occasion. But I believe this. What I hear the Lord saying is, will you do your part so I can do my part? I think too often we're waiting for God to do his part so we can do ours. When God's saying, watch, we even sing the song, draw near to me, then I'll draw near to you, right? Who's got the first move? We do. Over and over, it's we take a step and he meets us there. I challenge you today, think with me for just a minute. I could tell you miraculous, incredible stories of God's provision. And over the next couple of weeks, I'll actually share some of those things where where the Lord blessed Lori and I from uh, incredible, incredible blessings. I mean, just ridiculous stuff that just was proving his faithfulness over and over. But what I found was that he always challenged me. And he'd say, I'll be faithful if you'll be faithful first. Because God was speaking to my heart that way. I'm not telling you God's speaking to your heart that way, but I'm asking you to be open to what God's saying. And there's a place where you gotta say, God, I wanna be faithful. I wanna be faithful. You know why? He's trustworthy. He's trustworthy. Sometimes God asks us to do stuff that doesn't make sense. Anybody ever have that? Some of the crazy things, right? It's really Proverbs chapter 3, what's it say in verse 5? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Why? Because God's understanding doesn't often look like mine. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him. He'll direct your paths. Philippians 4.19 says, God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. And you may not know how it's all going to come together, but here's the deal. You just keep being faithful. You keep stepping it out. You keep doing what you can. You keep staying with your heart pure, your conscience clear. And watch how God has an amazing way of working things out. Stand with me all over the place. I believe this thing today. Watch this. Let me talk to you. You know how Jody was sharing in her testimony how her and Tom had walked through some really, really tough places? Because sometimes I look at that and think, man, God, you don't want me walking through those tough places. How many know it's the tough places that made you who you are today? Come on, man. I never learned how to trust God when things were good. I learned how to trust God when things got tough. It's easy to trust God when you're on the mountain. I'm going to ask you, can you trust him when you're in the valley? It's easy to say, I trust God, when the bill was due at midnight and at 11.59, the check came. Can you still worship him at one o'clock when they shut the lights off? You understand what I'm saying? Come on. Can you still worship him? Can you still trust him? When the brook dries up, because when we're Elijah and the brook dries up, we're like, God, what did you do? And you said, go to the brook. I went to the brook and now the brook's dry. God, you said you'd be faithful. And how many know God just had another plan? And the only way to get Elijah out of his comfortability at the brook Cherith was to dry the brook up. Couldn't God have kept the brook running even in the midst of famine? Because I think God could have kept the brook running in the midst of famine. I think he could have got a little ziggy cloud. Y'all, y'all aren't hearing me today. It's okay. Everything could have just went the way it was... But what? God needed him in Zarephath. God needed him in Zidon. God wanted to bless a widow woman there, and he's going to use a prophet to do it. But he had to get the prophet from the brook to Zarephath. What's God speaking in your life today? What's God speaking in your life today? I'm going to close with this, and we're going to pray. 20 of you got an envelope today to be a blessing to somebody be able to walk up to somebody, maybe an absolute complete stranger, might be somebody you know, might be that it's even just for you personally, that's okay. But you hear God, I want you to pray, I want you to hear the Lord. And out of that place, you can look at somebody, hand them that envelope, and let them know God sees you just right where you're at. And I want you to know, he says, he's the source of every blessing in your life. You don't have to worry or be afraid. And you hand them that envelope, and you walk away And they say, who was that masked man? And you left a little silver bullet. (laughs) And they open that envelope and there's a $50 bill inside. 
And all they heard was, God's the source of your blessing. I think that's amazing that we could bless some people in our community, that we could bless some people around us, that we could be a blessing to them and let them know God sees you right where you're at. But here's the reality of that. You might not have got one of those envelopes, but guess what? You have the same Holy Spirit. And it might not be a $50 bill in an envelope. It might be a $10 bill in your pocket, but you could just walk up to somebody and say, you know what? The Lord just laid it on my heart. Maybe you picked up the tab at their, at their table. You told their waitress, I want to bless them. When they ask for their check, tell them it's taken care of. God's the source of their blessing. Wouldn't that be a great day? Why? Because it's about being a blessing. It's about being the fountain of blessing in somebody else's life. Here's the reality. You know why the widow woman got blessed? Because she was the fountain of blessing to Elijah. She baked him a cake. Come on. Because she became a fountain of blessing, she got blessed. Why? Because every seed reproduces after its own kind. If you're going to be a blessing, guess what happens? Blessings will come back to you. Somebody said, I never get blessed. Well, go be a blessing. I'll bet you get blessed. I get more blessed being a blessing than getting a blessing. It's fun. God's challenging us. Be the fountain of blessing in somebody's life. Sometimes that fountain of blessing comes in a myriad of ways. Might be hugs and smiles and kind words. Walk up to a fat guy, say, you look like you're losing weight, man. (laughs) It's a blessing. (laughs) You stay there. (laughs) I saw you. (laughs) Come on. It's about, it's about how can I be a blessing? Not how can I get one, how can I be one? It's about going forth and being a blessing and realizing the source of every blessing is from above. Bow your head with me. Father, I thank you that today, Lord, you are challenging us. Just as the widow at Zarephath, you challenged her to be a blessing. God, I thank you that you're challenging us to be a blessing. Go and be a blessing to somebody. God, I just thank you. There is financial freedom when we learn how to be a blessing in somebody else's life. Uh, And I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, just come in an amazing fashion. God, I just thank you for loving, blessing, touching, moving, ministering. Holy Spirit, I welcome you right now. Speak to us individually. Speak to us corporately. Let the blessing of the Lord flow in our lives. And God, as your blessing flows in us, then I'm asking you, God, come and flow through us and touch the hearts and lives of all those that are around us and let the Spirit of the Lord have free reign upon us. Give us, Lord, a greater sense of the Holy Spirit. Help us to hear you. Help us to know you and understand the heart of God. And as we do, Lord, just as we sang, your nature is always good. God, may we walk in that nature of your goodness and be a blessing on the earth. Uh, You called your people to be a blessing on the earth. And so I'm asking you, Lord, let us flow in that place. uh, And may the fountain of your blessing flow out of us and touch the world around us. Uh, And God, we just thank you for the opportunities that you're open. God, you're opening doors for us. Give us courage and commitment to step through those open doors and be the blessing that you called us to be in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. Amen. Bless you. Go and be a blessing today. If you want to stay for the second service, leave something on your seat because I think we're going to pack pretty solid. Okay? Bless you guys. Thanks. Hug somebody and you can be dismissed. If you want special prayer, I would invite you to come.